Hello there, my name is Martin Henley. This is the Effective Marketing Content Extravaganza. And if you're new here, you couldn't possibly know that I am on a mission to give you everything you could possibly need if you are looking to be more successful in your business. Providing, of course, what you need to be more successful in your business is to know more about and be implementing more enthusiastically, more efficiently, and more effectively sales and marketing in your business, which is of course what you need. You need more customers more profitably, and eventually everything you need to do that will be right here on this channel. And let's not pretend there's not already enough stuff to get you started. So what happens is I'm here giving you everything I know about sales and marketing. That's the what the series that happens on a Monday. On a Tuesday, I pull in anyone I can find with experience to share that's going to be useful to you if you are looking to be more successful in your business. That's Talk Marketing on a Tuesday. Every other Wednesday, Melanie Farmer comes through. We look at the marketing news and speculate wildly about what it might mean for you in your marketing life and in your business. And on the other Wednesday, I review so you don't have to. Thursdays, you'll find us here thinking out loud. And on a Friday, we react to the very best and the very worst of marketing content on the internet. So if that sounds like it might be interesting or useful, please tell me it does. We're only here to be interesting and useful. Now would be the very best time to like, share, subscribe, and comment, because that will give us the motivation to continue on this epic, epic journey. Now, if you're catching us on the day we go live, it will be a Tuesday, which means it's talk marketing, which means we have a guest for you. And today's guest is a graduate of Florida State University with a Bachelor's of Science in Advertising and a Master's in Public Relations. So she is certainly qualified to speak to us. She has spent most of her career with the Windstorm Insurance Network, where she was Chief Marketing Officer and then Executive Director. She has also been a Certified Marketing Guide with StoryBrand. She is currently, standby, part of the LinkedIn Creators Creator Manager Programme co-founder of the LinkedIn Branding Community, co-host of the LinkedIn Branding Podcast, founder of Thought Makers, host of the Personal Brand Therapy Show Podcast, LinkedIn Live and LinkedIn Audio Show host, and is the brand therapist speaking and running corporate workshops. She is the co-author of the LinkedIn Branding Book and is currently writing her second book around her seven-step brand process. What you may not know about her is that she has done the splits every day for the last 10 years. Today's guest is nodding enthusiastically. Today's guest is Michelle B. Griffin. Good evening, Michelle B. Griffin. How are you? I am so glad to be here, Martin. Thank you for having me. What a list, right? It makes me dizzy what hearing list. that. So if you weren't thinking that maybe you need to rationalize a little bit, you might be thinking that now. Or you might be perfectly happy that you are doing those millions of things. Can you imagine? I like to keep busy, but that sounds a little too busy, doesn't it? It does a little bit. But the thing is, I think now where we are in 2023, you could do lots of things because mm -hmm. like like we call this grandly someone reached out to me yesterday i just posted the hundredth episode of these things and they said it must be doing you a lot of good and you must be really enjoying it and i think it is both of those things it's doing me a lot of good and i'm really enjoying it because what i'm doing is having meaningful conversations with really cool people do you know what i mean the point is that it counts as a thing so hosting a podcast hosting a couple of podcasts you know soon quite racks up but you are Absolutely. Su super super busy i mean there's another book coming, but you must have lots of ideas then. That's what striking me. Absolutely. I did the uh, Clifton Strengths official test just like last summer and ideation was my number two strength. So that really confirmed things, right? I have a lot of ideas. Ideas are great, but you got to implement them. Otherwise they're just ideas. So I guess apparently I've implemented a lot of them and a lot of them have not been implemented, but I'm like you, I'm, I'm an extrovert. I love being around people, connecting with people is a core value and learning. You know, every time you learn as a podcast host, you interview, I've done a hundred episodes too, between my two podcasts. And I have met so many people that way and learned so much. So that's why when we're out there in the world, connecting and sharing our thoughts, we're creating change for everybody. And, and that's the beauty of it. That is the beauty of it. And the thing is, this has been, I expected <clears throat> when I started my podcast, I wanted to be exposing the charlatans. Do you know what I mean? They're, they're all out there. These people mm -hmm. on the pre-roll ads telling you if you're not getting 200 leads in a business, you're failing. 200 leads a day in your business, you're failing, et cetera, et cetera. 
And I can't find any of those people. I can only find really cool, interesting people, you know. So that's one of the learnings. And then I learn things all the time. One of the most interesting people I spoke to was a guy called Simon Bowen. And he said basically that your business depends on the quality of the thinking that goes on in your business. And it's just like, Ooh, that's, that's it. Strong. You know I mean? That is mm -hmm. 100% it. So, um, yeah, so I'm really cool. I'm really happy. So that's the way I answered my friend. I said, look, it's done me some good. The networking is amazing. But having the conversations is so cool. And I think that's what's keeping it going. I mean, it was also supposed to pay for my retirement. I wanted YouTube because I can't stand corporations. So I thought there'd be some poetic justice in YouTube paying for my retirement. Of course, that's not happening. Nothing like. But the conversations and the networking has been amazing. Um, we're not here to talk about me and what I'm up to. Um, you need to tell us about this splits thing. How come you've done the splits every day for 10 years? That's ridiculous. I know, um, because it was hard to learn. <laughs> I mean, it, okay. So back when I was like in grade school, I just like, I'm going to teach myself how to do splits. Like all my friends are in gymnastics and they were very, you know, agile and stuff. And I'm like, I'm going to learn too. And so I taught myself and then I realized it took six weeks to learn how to do it. And I'm like, I'm not giving that up. So I've been doing it um, all through my life. And then um, I'm a streak builder. I have a streak builder in my community and I'm all about challenges and streaks. I can't stand breaking them. So it's been 10 years. It was December 1st, um, 2012. So a little over, you know, that I started that streak. And um, so I did that. I did another streak in, on LinkedIn in 2021. I decided I wanted to post every single day. I did that, ended up with 532 posts. Um, another one was I made myself run for six months. And um, so that's how my brain occupies and does goals. You're like, you got to do a thing. So I don't tell everyone about my splits, but I thought that was the most interesting thing when you asked me <laughs> what's the most interesting thing. So you don't hear that too often. So I get a lot of, wow, that's cool. So oh, we'll that's see, cool. we'll see how long it lasts. I once had a friend give me a birthday card with a, like a 90 something year old lady still doing the splits, a real picture of someone. So she's like, <laughs> this is you back, you know, uh, not back, but you know, in the future. So that's my goal, right? I'll be splitting when I'm nineties. <laughs> yes. We'll hopefully be doing that. How fun would that be? That would be really fun. But I think this is pertinent to what we're talking about. We today which is if people haven't got it from the introduction um we're talking about personal brand um mm -hmm. and this is kind of what interests me about personal brand is the idea that especially in sales so what interests me is like the the, the difference between what you are and what you want to present yourself as being i don't know do you know frank prendergast Yes, I'm familiar with that name, yes. You're familiar with the name, yeah. He also talks about <laughs> personal brand and storytelling. And his definition of personal brand was it's it's about being known for the things that you're good at, making sure you're known for the things that you're good at. Mm -hmm. But also, mm -hmm. it's it seems to me that it's about being known for the things that you really want to be known for or be, being better. So then this idea of like forming better habits, being a better person. So if, if for mm -hmm. example, we're probably going off a little bit previously here, but if, for example, you're a salesperson, you want to build a personal brand, there's no mystery mm -hmm. to what people want from a salesperson is to be like really knowledgeable, is to be reliable, is to be those things. So maybe mm -hmm. the, the opportunity then is just to be more of that. Do you know what I mean? Actually to evolve to be that person and I think you do that in the way that you're not quite talking about, but is in like forming really good habits of just getting mm -hmm. on a streak. Maybe I'm going to do it very shortly with a spreadsheet. I want to do these 12, 14 things a day, and I'm going to start marking off in a spreadsheet when I do it. So hopefully I can get to a point where I can say, oh, I've done this thing for 10 years to people. Yeah, I mean, that is part of your brand. I, I think personal branding is very, has a parallel to personal development, right? I yes. mean, we want to keep growing and getting the best of us, the real us. Now, I want to caution, you know, there's a lot of people who push back on personal branding because they think it's the made up, you know, version of us. No, this is just us, the best part of us, the real us, how you are online, offline and um, personal development. You want to keep building that to keep growing. A brand doesn't 
you know, stop just like we don't hopefully. Right. So personal development is so key because you're learning so many things and you're growing and you're evolving. But I know that uh, street building is how I keep growing and doing things and succeeding because we all have our ways and mine. I actually have a street builder. Um, it was actually based on a um, blog post by, you know, the book Atomic Habits by James Clear. You're familiar with that book? It's like no. a phenomenal. I mean, I've heard oh, of it, you... but I haven't read it. Yeah. Oh, it's good. Well, he had a blog post about, um, you've heard of the com comedian Jerry Seinfeld, right? Everyone yes. has. Yeah. Okay. So back in the day when Jerry Seinfeld would write jokes before he got a show, he he actually did like i gonna write a, a joke every single day so he bought one of these ginormous wall size calendars 365 days and every day he'd take a red marker huge red those stinky red markers you know those gross ones that have that weird smell and he would make a big fat red streak through it and so every day he'd write a joke and good or bad he wrote it and it just kept ingraining in him the process and every time you do something you're going to get a little bit better and so that is how i envision for me to grow my brand and my personal development is just finding a goal and just sticking to it. And for me, it was my, my roadblock was posting on LinkedIn in 2020. I knew I had to get out there, but for nine months I resisted. I just couldn't do it. So I forced myself to do a public challenge. I'm like, and I don't know, one day I just said, I'm going to post every single day on LinkedIn. And so I had that proverbial, it was a digital uh, red streak thing. And I, I checked the list and no one um, really believed that I would do it, honestly. <laughs> but i did and that's what fuels me when you put it out publicly and no one believes in you that just fuels a fire even more so um so yeah so i encourage people if hey whatever your hang up is and you you just got to find the way that works best for you and um and for me it's street building yes okay so that goes to something else doesn't it that goes to like objectives and it goes to the thing that's striking me about you, which is this implementation, this consistency, this doing lots of things. So there mm -hmm. are there was that fake Harvard study. Do you, are you familiar with that one, where they mm -mm. took a class of Harvard students and then they spoke to them about what their goals were for the future, and they found that eighty percent didn't have any goals, and then fifteen percent did, but they hadn't written them down and 5% or 1% or whatever. You can make it up because it's a made-up story. Um, but they, um, the, the ones who wrote it down were 10 times more successful than the ones who hadn't written it down who were 10 times more successful than the ones who didn't have goals. So there's this whole smart thing about objectives, and then there's committing them to paper, and then there's like public accountability, isn't there? There's actually standing up in the world and saying, look, I'm going to do these things. So there are methods to making sure these things get achieved. Mm -hmm. um, so it's interesting. So yeah, so here, I, I think there's like a thing, isn't there, where like, so for example, if you want to be a better salesperson, like you should evolve to become a better salesperson and do the things that better salespeople do. The danger then, I suppose, is we've definitely got a little bit ahead of ourselves, but the danger is then that you present yourself as something that you're not. Is that the danger of personal branding, where you put yourself in the world as the things maybe that you should be that you're not? I don't know. What do you think about that? Absolutely. Well, that's you, you just want to f carve out knowing clarity of internally who you are and what you want to stand for and stand apart as who you're here to serve and how are you well defined in the marketplace now that's 100 percent aligned as you internally externally who you're serving and with your professional you know external clarity but the pushback that people get and i think it comes from seeing all the fakeness out there in some social media channels is people show the highlight reel of who they're not right and a made-up version that's not you can't sustain that so you want to 100 percent know who you are and that's going to define you and keep you going and then as a salesperson we're here to solve problems that's essentially what sales is right serving people solving their problems so we want to know 100 percent about the audience we're here to serve the way i look at it's personal branding is visibility is not vanity it's being valuable that's what i always say and so people have to know you exist 
who you're for, who you're about, and why you're here to help them. So that's all really what personal branding is. It's a strategic, intentional narrative of who you are. So you create that connection and association with the right people you're here to help and serve. That's Good. how I look at right. it. I think that, but I think sales, the function could do with some branding help because mm -hmm. I don't think salespeople, I don't think people understand that about salespeople that they're there to help, to help you to make the best buying decisions. Um, and I don't think salespeople understand that they're there to help or to serve. Um, so yeah, I think, I think um, sales, the function could do with some branding. Okay, let's bring some order to I this agree. because we yes. are um here to talk very purposefully about um personal branding so there are five questions as you know the first question is how are you qualified to talk to us about your specialist subject your specialist subject is personal branding um the second question then is who do you work with how do you add value to their lives the third question is what is your recommendation for people who are looking to get started or looking to get better with personal branding fourth question what should people read Fifth question, who can you throw under the bus? Um, like the wonderful um, Michelle B through you under the bus who might enjoy or maybe even enjoy to have a conversation like this with me. So the first question then, how are you qualified to talk to us? How do you get to be a personal brand specialist, a personal brand, um, what's the word you use, therapist? The brand therapist, that's how I coined myself recently. Well, it's definitely not just saying you are one. I mean, you can, and that's sort of a downside that I've seen this term has gotten so popular in the last year or two. And everyone says that, you know, anywhere from posting on social media to writing your content to doing this and that is personal branding. And the way I look at it is I take my years experience in public relations and marketing and branding. I have merged in that. So I'm completely giving you a strategic and foundational versus fluffy uh, brand strategy. I'm here to bring, give you the brand foundation. If you're going to build a house, you don't start by painting the walls, right? You put a, you get a plan and you build a strong foundation. So the walls and everything out there goes up. And so that's the pushback that I see too many people go to, you know, the steps seven, eight, and all the things when you need to start. That's why I created a framework. I'll tell you that, Martin, because I saw too many people just going after the fluffy part of branding, which doesn't get you far. So I created a, a seven step program, which I really call personal positioning. That's really what you're doing. Position yourself to stand out with who you are, what you want to be known for, what you're equipped to be known for. We're not making these things up and who you're here to stand up for and stand, you know, apart for and and that's what it is so i'm well equipped to blend all that in and this beautiful framework takes you on a stair step approach so that you start with that blueprint and you know where the heck you're going right i mean we have to know what we want and how we're going to get there we can't just go all over and and so that's why i love what i do i really strive getting to i think question number two am i jumping ahead am i how am i equipped or how do you i help people jumping is ahead that number two you can't jump ahead i'll decide when. We're oh no ahead. that's your job <laughs> okay <laughs> i'm okay, i'm putting cool. my podcast host back on so for, forgive okay. me for that all right um so I have some questions about like maybe what would be interesting to know is what a personal brand is and why people need one. Mm -hmm. Good question, because that's another thing that gets misused, misquoted, misaligned. So a personal brand is for a person. It's not a company, obviously, or an organization. It is the essence of you, right? Who you are, uh, all the in missions values beliefs of you sorry i'm sorry i'm gonna come i'm gonna call <laughs> this is my neighbor devon this is the oh. most disruptive con <laughs> the most disruptive conversation i've ever had say hello hi to there Michelle. she's all the way in florida hi, hi there <laughs> you're so cute oh i can't i can't i've got I've, i'm gonna call for another 45 minutes is that okay can you come back to me later dude is that okay Okay. Oh, oh so I love sad. it. Oh. Oh. 
He was so excited to see you. (laughs) And I've been away. That that was my landlady. I used to stay with them and I've just moved house. So he comes to see me and I've been away for five days. I'm so sorry, Michelle. This is the most disruptive (laughs) conversation I've ever had. (laughs) It's fun though. Good thing for editing. So we're all good. So, okay, okay, I'll start thing. Uh, A personal brand is definitely, it's a great question because it's misused, misquoted. And so a personal brand obviously is the brand of a person, not a company organization. It's the essence of who you are, all about you, what you stand for. And it's the way I do it is a foundational strategic approach of taking all that out there into the market. So you're well-defined and you stand out and you're different and you're, you know, carved and differentiated and positioned. So that's what a personal brand is. Personal branding is the act of doing that. And so branding is the act of, you know, differentiating yourself and helping you stand out. And a personal brand is the brand of a person essentially putting yourself out there and being known for that one thing that you are known for. With the connection and the promise, I just want to say, Let me clarify, because a brand, in a sense, let's start at the real bottom, a brand in itself is the association and the emotional connection, the intangible things that you think of and you feel and you're associated when you think of me as a personal brand. So does that clarify? Because there's a lot of misunderstanding of what those terms, you ask five different brand strategists, they're all going to say a little bit different. And that's my take. Okay, good. Yes. And I think brand is this mysterious thing. Like I mm-hmm. always, I had a presentation back in the day called Does My Business Look Big, Big in This, which was like a brand thing. Um, and I always described it as like the clothes that your business wears. Do you know what I mean? So in a business brand, it's the way you want to present yourself. Um, the thing about this is, according to Frank, um, is that people have a perception of you anyway. So really mm-hmm. what he says is personal branding is investing in making that perception the thing that's most useful to you do you know what i mean so people are going to be coming to an opinion of you anyway Mm -hmm. and branding is investing in shaping that opinion you know absolutely it's the the stuff that's less useful and investing in the stuff that's more yeah yeah well i mean you're you're not gonna recreate or miss be misleading about it but it's the intentional and the strategic process of communicating your value your vision your beliefs so that people associate positively with you right because you can present it but at the end of the day and you're trying to control that narrative in a good way, but at the end of the day, it's what people are thinking of you. So we can do the brand, but it's essentially what people feel of us. So yeah, so it's as good as what people think of us. So we wanna be top of mind. There's a lot of people who don't bother. This is why you wanna have a personal brand. Give you an example. So in my previous role, which you mentioned, I worked in the insurance and legal industry, right? And back, this is before I was doing personal branding, even though I was in PR marketing, people would ask me, Michelle, so what do you do? You work, you're an insurance agent, you work in insurance. And I'm like, oh God, no, 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 I'm not an insurance agent. Nothing wrong with it. If anyone's listening, nothing wrong. I say, no, I do marketing for it. And so back then, you know, I was not doing a good job of doing my personal brand and I regret that. And so had I been doing that sooner, I would have been farther along, you know, when I started my own consultancy. So here's the thing, people are gonna think what they are of us. So let's give them a good reason and association um, so that the right people resonate with us and and reach us and we can reach them. So that that's all what it is. It's a connection and a promise that you help make in the minds of other people. Okay, good. I really like that. Because the other thing I think that goes on, I think the reason that businesses struggle with their marketing and maybe individuals struggle with their marketing is because they don't, they're not invested enough in the value that they offer in the world. They don't know mm-hmm. what it is. Do you know what I mean? Because, and then I think lots of people don't really think that they add value in the world, which is why I think salespeople are supposed to be um, serving people, but they're not. They're just foisting products on people because they don't really know their value proposition. And they're not mm-hmm. delivering their value proposition. They're just getting away with it, I think. Good. So this starts then with really investing in that, understanding the value that you add in the world, mm-hmm. understanding how you serve the world. 
Mm -hmm. And how it's different. Can I say that real quick? Sorry to interrupt, but how you're different because there can be thousands of people like you who, you know, are selling the same product or marketing this and that, but how is it different? Why should I resonate with you? Why should I choose you? So that's a strong part of branding. I want to have that strong emotional difference and connection so that you do stand out and you're not a commodity. That's another part. Right. So I've got an issue with differentiation for differentiation's sake, because Mm -hmm. I think you have Shark Tank in the US, we have Dragon's Mm -hmm. Den, where Mm -hmm. they bring in these poor people and shatter their hopes and dreams in front of a national (laughs) TV audience. It's absolutely appalling. But one of the the, the like mantras or one of the supposed criteria is the thing they offer has to be completely original. It has to be unreproducible. There has to be no competition or no way anyone can follow them. But that for me seems like as a marketer, like what I have to do then is educate the world as to the value of this thing before I can start selling it. So I think differentiation for differentiation's sake is difficult and expensive. But then what's the thing that I wanted to say about that? Is differentiation just then the hook, just the thing that distinguishes you from somebody else? Or is there something more meaningful to it? Well, it's why I should choose you and do business with you. You know, what, why are you different so that I, you know, I am attracted to you and I am drawn to you because we're not supposed to be for everybody, right? We're not, usually our products aren't for everybody. You know, there's usually more than one in the marketplace. So um, our Shark Tank is not as cutthroat as far as you have to be, because there's a lot of people who come and they'll say, so what else is on the market? So we don't, we're not as, I can imagine Dragon's Den with even the name has got to be even harder for these products to come out and to even make it on the show. If they're one of a kind, then they're in a new category and that in itself definitely takes more education. Yes. And that's cost. That's money that you have to spend Mm -hmm. now educating people. Um, Mm -hmm. And it all fits into this weird idea of like this magic product that comes from nowhere and everybody suddenly wants and needs and with with all That's of that tough. stuff. The differentiator for me, the important one, is that you're better <laughs> or that you care more. Or do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's like, so customer centricity, I think, is like everyone wants to be a customer centric business or a customer centric person. But nobody really is. So I think the danger if people, like another guy that I spoke to who's going up next Tuesday, um, he, he talks about weeing on people. So it's when you get into a conversation with a salesperson or a business, even if it's on their website, it's like, we do this, we do that, we do this, mm-hmm. something else. And nobody's interested in that. And I think the difference with the dif- difficulty or the challenge with that di- sort of differentiation is that you have to talk, be talking about you to tell people why you're different. Um, I don't know, maybe I'm just challenged with that because I don't think, I think the difference I wanna, I I wanna hear that people are more invested, more interested and getting better results. That's the difference that I'm interested in. And I think that really is different because whilst everyone is proclaiming that they're customer centric, nobody really is. Does that make sense? Well, absolutely. I mean, they say it, but yeah, it doesn't mean anything. Here's how you change the narrative in that. Don't talk about yourself. Talk about the problem your customer has. Then they start listening. So that's how I do it when I do my positioning. We we really go after the problem we're solving, okay? Yes. The transformation we're bringing. We don't do product-based yes. or me-based approaching. It's like, hey, you have this problem we're here to solve it i'm here to solve it and this is the way i see it and and in personal branding it involves a lot of the beliefs the missions and the point of view you have you know i work a lot in professional services the brands and the clients that i have are um, service-based entrepreneurs professionals and so they are their business you know their service is their product and they have to be front and center have deep trust relatability and solve problems because let's face it in today's attention deficit world we're only in it for ourselves i mean we're our minds racing like i have a problem right now so when you hear have someone come to you and start talking about the problem you're trying to transform i'm going to listen to that so that's how i really push my branding differentiation how do we show up 
as the problem you're having and how is this different than someone else who's trying to tackle this same issue? So that's how I look at positioning and differentiation. Um, and that truly is customer centric without saying how good we are. We're talking about the customer and the transformation they need. And so they pay attention, right? So that's the way to take it. 100%. 100%. I think this is one of my learnings out of the last couple of years, out of all these conversations. It's, a, it's about affecting the change because affecting the change is actually oh are we going in a direction we don't need to go in but affecting the change is like simon bowen says everybody like the psychology is everybody's scared but everybody wants to win so we've got to a situation where everyone's maybe living with these these problems that we want to resolve so affecting the change is much more about your ability to break through their fear to, mm -hmm. to actually work on the problem do you know what i mean then it is even to do with your personal efficiency or effectiveness or the strategy that you've got like a large part of the challenge for a salesperson or for a business is actually cutting through their fear so that you get to actually do the work um and if you're winning on people you're just talking about how good you are at doing that you're not talking about how good you are at cutting through okay are you ready for a challenging okay. question absolutely <clears throat> Okay, good. Here's the challenging question. Brand is dangerous. We are seeing, we have seen in the last six months, and we're seeing currently, it's the middle of April 2023, mm -hmm. quite a, like the, the big negative effect of brand. So what I'm interested in is Kanye West, whose brand has just gone out of the window completely. His personal brand was worth billions of dollars and has completely gone out of the window in the last six months. And then what we're seeing currently is with Bud Light. Have you seen this? Where they decided mm -hmm. to promote themselves using a transgender person mm -hmm. and it has wiped reportedly four or five billion dollars off mm -hmm. of their valuation. We've got probably the best example ever in the UK. There's a guy called Gerald Ratner. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you know about Gerald Ratner. You should know if you're talking about brand. He used to run a jewelry company um, and then he stood up in the House of Lords in the UK and did a speech. And he used to do this speech a lot. But this time there was a journalist there who didn't like him. <laughs> so <laughs> what he used to do is he used to stand up and he would say, we sell like this tiny teapot with five tiny silver goblets. And it costs, um, and what did he say? And you can have this for less than five pounds. And people say, how can you make this so cost effectively? And I tell them it's because it's total junk. And um, then the other thing he said was, um, we sell a pair of silver plated um, earrings that cost less than a Marks and Spencer sandwich, but won't last as long. Um, and this wiped out his entire business, like he lost hundreds of millions of dollars. So there's, for me, there's this sense that once you create this one unified relationship, like the mm -hmm. line between love and hate is really thin. So once you've mm -hmm. got something that people are really invested in, it, it can break really easily. And I think, what do I think? I mean, I just think this is going on in the world now. Bud Light have just lost $5 billion because they made an iffy marketing brand decision. What do you think about that? Yeah, it's a classic example of um, not staying true to their core values and switching mid gear, you know, to their core audience, what their core audience is, you know, as, it's nothing about any kind of rights or anything. It's truly like, did the brand go off a track out of nowhere and threw yes. everyone off guard. So I think that's what is just what people were shocked about, you know, what, you know, it's just completely a 360 from what they normally did. So, um, yeah, in the case of Kanye West, your your brand, you know, there's a quote by Warren Buffett. It says it takes 20 years to build a brand in like five minutes. I mean, that was probably before social media. He said that maybe like a minute, five, 30 seconds now to break it. So we have to stay true to our brand core values, you know, and really listen to the customer and really what they want. And obviously that is not what their core audience wanted. So they are seeing ramifications now. And then of course, from a PR standpoint, their CEO did the um, non-apology apology, apology uh, a few days later and then got slammed for that. So they really just can't win at this point. So we shall see where that goes. 
It's a very interesting case study. And I can imagine from years to come, that's going to be a wonderful case study on branding and um, brand equity and how to lose it. And just <laughs> without this, you know, with going off track, how easily it can just be lost. And, and also yeah. these other instances, you know, so your brand is one of the most valuable things that you have. And honestly, it's not tangible sometimes, right? But it is the most important asset a person or brand or company can have. So we have to treat it as such. Yes. Okay, good. So it just seems to me that it's a, a fragile thing. Do you know what I mean? You, you mm -hmm. put all your eggs in one basket when you're building a brand. And the other thing that's occurring to me now is like, I've always worked with kind of small, not even very medium businesses necessarily, not 100% exclusively. But they don't invest in brand early enough. They don't understand the mm -mm. value of brand. And they don't understand, because I suppose they're very in a very reactive situation. They just need, if they spend some money, they need customers to come back. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, but if people don't understand the value of brand, they just need to look at the world's leading brands. You know, Tesla mm -hmm. is the most valuable brand, in, the most valuable car manufacturer in the world. And it's got nothing to do with their history because it doesn't compare with Mercedes-Benz or Toyota or anyone else. It has nothing to do with the volume because it doesn't compare to Mercedes-Benz or Toyota or, or BMW or anyone else. That valuation is entirely the effect of their brand and mm -hmm. the effectiveness of Elon Musk, the master PR guy. Which you have seen that he it's their value has gone up and down, you know, after he took over Twitter and you know, do all of these things. So you've got to tread lightly with your brand, you know, and, and, and that's a case for personal brand and business brands together. They, they can work really well or they, you can, one can really hurt the other. So, um, but that's another case study for another day, but your brand, just if the takeaway here is your brand is the most important asset, it can make or break you and you want to keep growing it. It's a valuable long-term game. It's not a short hack and you definitely want to use it and, <coughs> excuse me you definitely want to have one and start f the beginning because rebranding or coming in later in the game and doing your brand that can be very costly as well yes <coughs> excuse really me i don't know that. what happened <laughs> i don't know what happened yeah. here gosh this is like we're plagued today with all these things. we are Sorry. plagued today but we are rolling through i think we are rolling through um so what did i want to say about that so that maybe then segues us into question number two. So are you ready for some good news? Mm-hmm. Are you okay? Let's do it. Yeah, I don't know what happened. Yeah, I just got a scratchy throat. I am fine. Let's go to number two. Right. The good news is I think you're eminently qualified to talk to us about personal brand. Okay. Thank you. I'm glad I made the cut. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> you're very welcome. One day somebody's not going to make the cut. It's going to be extraordinarily uncomfortable. It could be um, very entertaining though, right? You could just cut off the podcast right then and there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. So question number two, who do you work with? How do you add value to their lives? So this is where we've got to, I think I probably know the answer, but how do you go about convincing, because with, you're working with individuals, how do you go mm -hmm. about convincing individuals that they need to invest in their personal brand? That's what. I'm well, in. luckily, the people who come to me are already aware that they need to do it. I Good. Um, don't have to convince anyone. And those are my target audience, my people who, and here's where, who I love to work with. I call them hidden experts and high achievers. They are people who are beautiful at what they do, have an excellent zone of genius, but they're hiding they're been the behind the scenes on the sidelines only people in maybe you know their small little circle know how great they are and they realize wow the world's changed um i can't get a loan on talent or my job alone or you know more people have to know me so the people who come to me are ready and i absolutely love taking these absolutely brilliant people they're change makers impact makers and they have these beautiful ideas and expertise that can just create massive change for their own clients. So they come to me ready and willing, and that's who I love helping. And they need clarity. That's the number one thing I really give people is clarity, positioning, and a plan. Um, I can help you get out of your own head because we have too many ideas. You know, I, as an idea 
person. I absolutely can relate to that. So once we get out and how they want to stand out, step out, we take them along my plan, my seven step process. And that's a visibility roadmap that get, helps them with their marketing, their PR, their messaging. It, it's a conglomeration of all the things you need. It's a brand in a box, if you will, but I call it your brand book. So that's the funnest thing is take people on a journey. So that's who I love helping. Excellent. Okay, good. Um, so that of course is the answer. That's why we do marketing is to attract people who are already motivated to do something about fixing this problem that they have. So that is a hundred percent the right answer. Okay. So they come to you, they understand that they are, do they understand that they're, what are you calling them? Hidden geniuses. Hidden high achievers. <laughs> hidden yes. high achievers. Yes. Do they know yes. that they're hidden high achievers already? They identify with that because they've been doing wonderful things, but no one knows about it. And they want to, you know, a lot of the clients I work with um, hurt are either, you know, kind of, they're established and, you know, they're not new at this and they realize either if they're in a, you know, a executive position or, you know, a recent exit from corporate, they realize, hey, no one really knows who I am. I want to take this idea I have, this stuff I've been doing and really help people mon brand, market and monetize. That's a lot of what I do. You know, yeah. we're not just doing this for a hobby. Everyone, you know, they might end up wanting to get on podcasts, write books, speak, you know, they want to do something. It's all about the goals of what they want to do. I mean, that's the first thing, like, well, which way do you want to go? Like, right. When you plan a trip, we don't just say, okay, let's roll the dice and see where you want to go. No, we have an idea where we want to go. And so that's where I help them. And each client has different needs and different desires and goals. And so I work on that, but, um, but ultimately we monetize all their expertise, right? They're doing this to create impact, influence, and an income. And that's exactly what I help them do. So that's the beautiful thing. What I do to use your zone of genius for good and for, you know, bottom line revenue too. Brilliant. Okay, good. So that brings us then to the seven step process. Do you want to share that with us? Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, I call it, it's called the brand GPS, right? It takes you, it position, positions you for, with a brand that takes you places because that's what a brand will do, take you places. So as I told you, it's foundational. So number one is perspective. We absolutely have to know all about you, your missions, your values, beliefs, because that's going to dictate a lot of things like who you want to show up as and for and all those things. So when we know, and that's the number one thing, people are stuck in their own brains. They've been doing this thing for so long. We just can't see the forest for the trees, too many ideas. So I have assessments and I really deep dive with them to find out their perspectives. I've got all these templates and charts and we, we chart it. Then after we know about you, we're going to the external clarity of who are you here to serve? It's called people. Number two is people. Now in marketing, as you know, we don't help everyone, right? So when I mean people, it's two prong, your persona, that one audience person you're here to help, right? We want to know their challenges, needs, desires, but also we want to know partners. Who are your industry alliance advocates? They're going to help you build that brand and that business faster than you can do it yourself. So helps you cross pollinate together and borrow each other's audience. So we get really clear on all your persona, um, the marketplace to see where there's the opportunity gaps, who's doing what. So it's a very deep dive, find out the voice of customer. I get a real, really deep dive more than most strategists. When I work with clients they are like, hi, I was not expecting this deep dive. I treat it like a company brand. So, um, very, very important to know who you're here to serve and show up for. Number three, step three, positioning. How are you taking what you knew with your perspective and your people and position it? So I am here for that one person I'm here to help. I'm different. I'm top of mind with the problem I solve for the person I'm here to help. So we position you with messaging and your promise and how you're different. And so people know that. No question. So number one, two, and three are very strategic and very intangible. 
we're creating that brand identity, brand strategy, the essence, if some people even call it your brand DNA, right? The three things that help define who you are. So important. So many people skip the step and just go to number four. And that's where I call packaging. How are you going to show up? A lot of it's visual, your colors, your fonts. You know, a lot of people, the problem is they think brand is color, right? They think brand is a logo. They think brand is a uh, font and shapes and all that, which it is, but that's just a part of it. So we make sure your website looks good, your social um, things are you're aligned, packaged and aligned. And if you have any kind of IP and framework that comes out too, as I'm telling you this, my IP, my framework is exactly what I'm, it helps you codify your thought leadership and your ideas. So important. So once we get to packaging and you're all aligned across social and your own stuff, we go to number five and that's publishing. That's a fuel to our brands that helps breed expertise, shows us your expertise and starts creating trust, right? Because people can't read our minds. We have to get out there and show them. We have to tell them. So number five is publishing. Number six, as we're getting really in the flow, is promote. That's where a lot of the PR comes. You're going to amplify your messages on speaking and podcasts and, you know, media mentions. That's really big to amplify your message. So you're rocking and rolling. Number seven, the last final stage is propel. You're paying it forward. You're building your community. And you're looking to bigger and more opportunity things. And you're just going to keep shooting higher and higher with your brand because it's not a one and done you just keep going and keep evolving and keep growing so that very 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 high level is your seven step brand gps personal positioning system brilliant genius and i'm with you because i have a six step marketing strategy thing um, mm -hmm. which sounds very similar because the strategy is always similar do you know what i mean like if it's going to be effective Absolutely. but what i think is by the time you've done like the what what in marketing we call the situational analysis mm -hmm. and once you're a hundred percent which sounds like your first three steps once you're a hundred percent know where you are then you can start thinking about where you can get to from there and once you've done mm -hmm. that and kind of your objective setting or your goal setting you've done 80 percent of the work then the yeah. um the options start to make themselves apparent. Um, mm -hmm. The question, does everybody, like everybody seems to on this podcast, have some brilliance to add in the world? Are there people who come to you and say, look, I'm brilliant, and you have to tell them that you're not actually, we can't help you? Does that happen? Luckily, no one comes to me and says I'm brilliant. It, it, it's pretty obvious. Um, I help them find the unique angle to to bring out that to kind of position, package, and promote it. Is essentially what I do. Um, yes. I've never failed to find some unique angle to help someone get out there, and um, and a lot of times it's, they all have some idea that's the beauty of it is trying to find a unique way to angle and codify their ideas, much like your, your framework. And that helps people when we're, you know, looking for different people to help us. It helps, you know, people resonate with those simplifying com complex ideas. And so the, and nothing else, a framework is usually how I've helped people bring it out. But when you marry their beliefs, that's huge. And their expertise and what they've been doing. And then it's almost like a puzzle. So like who they are and their beliefs, and then the person they're going to help, it's like a mix and match thing. And then, and then their standout point of view, and then the way they achieve that and help that it's, it's like, I don't want to say it's like creating Legos, but it's like taking all the bits and pieces and building something that is unique and different. Like there's no usually two Lego creations, right? I mean, it's really very interesting to take all the different colors and pieces and build something new each time. And so, um, yeah, so I guess that's why I usually like working with established people because they have enough going on and on the plate and on paper that there's something to work with, right? I mean, if yes. you're just getting out, you've got to you've got to get that expertise and that 
life's, you know, I'm not saying we can't build a brand, but it's so much easier when we have all the building blocks, so to speak, to, to work with. Excellent. No, and I think you're right. That's kind of part of the qualification. By the time they have money to invest in it, and by the time they're realizing that they need it, they they must have something. You know, there must be, mm -hmm. the ground blocks must be there. So are you supporting them to shape their content, to shape their their messaging? So for example, if I were to come to you and I would say, okay, I've done this for a bit. <laughs> Everyone seems to be quite happy. I've got some budget, you know, I need to do this, but I think I probably need a keynote. Are we going to work together to, to, to shape that keynote? Is that the way it works? Well, one of the things I want to clarify that I recently really started leaning into and, and really speaks to the people I help is, is a facet of personal branding. It's called thought leadership branding, where you're really coming to market and showing up with your ideas and your expertise. And that's, that's really sits well with the audience I serve because face it, sometimes they don't like the term personal branding, makes them uneasy. So when I call it, and what I do is thought leadership branding, uh, which flows exactly into this question. So what I do is I give you the strategy and all the things that you're gonna show up in the world with, okay? So as far as helping you write your keynote, we'll think, of, we'll strategize and like, you know what, based on all this, like if you want to do a TEDx, apply for a TEDx, this would be an awesome angle to go for, but I don't help them write it. Like I would, I also have a network of high end uh, specialists who will help them work with them to write it, to present it, or like I'll have a network of website designers that we have the key messaging and they'll go and create it. So I, I don't write the keynote for them, but they know exactly what they want to show up in the world with. Does that make sense? Right. With, for Good. the keynote yeah excellent okay because i don't think this is any more difficult whether it's a business or it's a solopreneur or it's a thought leader or it's anything what you need to do all you need to do is know the value that you deliver in the world know exactly mm -hmm. who benefits most from that value deliver that value and evidence that value mm -hmm. and i have to say you do that as much as at least i don't want to say more than because there's a hundred people who might go wait wait a minute i also do that <laughs> <laughs> but as much as anyone so in your about on your this is what i've been doing i haven't been fidgeting while you've been talking to me i've been looking at your profile in your about you say um after working with me clients are booked on industry leading podcasts within two weeks hired by Fortune 500 companies for paid training, launch um, sponsored industry niche, niche podcasts of their own, um, carve out a new category, landed a TEDx talk, invited to serve on board and advisory positions, aligned with fulfillment and impact in their zone of genius. And then that goes straight to links to the results, the case studies and testimonials and community love pages on your website. This is all you Those have happen. to do. Yeah. Those happen. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it happened. <laughs> yeah. No, but I'm just saying those is, are the results. Yeah, that's a the tangible thing is, result. Michelle, people don't real do it. Brand. People aren't doing it. So if you are the example, and if what you're laying out is the example, mm -hmm. then you're the example. This is what people want to see. When we were running our, our marketing agency, we were one of the very few marketing agencies who were invested in our own marketing. So it was really mm -hmm. easy for people to come to us and say, look, we want marketing that looks like yours and acts like yours and performs like yours, you know? Um, so it's weird that people just don't walk the talk. You got to do it too. I get a lot of clients that say, well, I like your, I like your brand. Your brand's really good. I like your website. I get that a lot too, because I, I call myself my guinea pig. I do everything that yes. I help my clients with. And writing that book last year was the last, and, and writing the second one. And now I haven't done a TEDx talk, but I am going to be applying for one um, just because I wanted to make sure everything was right. But I want to hit everything that I help my clients with. I've been there, done that, and, you know, I've tested it. And I've also helped people do that. But you're right. You want to make sure that you walk the walk and talk the talk. And um, so you're legit and you've been there. And especially if you've been there, not only have you help someone do that, but you yourself can relate because you've walked those, you know, those problems yes. and done those things, people really resonate really well with yes, that. Yes, yes, yes. 
And I think it's especially an issue in marketing where people don't invest in the thing that they are supposed to be solving. I mean, I've, I've interviewed people who are running like marketing agencies for marketing agencies or I think they're running marketing networks. And basically, marketing companies don't invest in marketing. Personal branding specialists don't invest in their, their personal brand. And then how, yep. two things, how can you mean, how can you honestly be in the world provide saying this is valuable if you don't see value in it? And how do you do it if you haven't done it for yourself? Okay, good. We 100%. might run over by a couple of minutes. Is that cool? I think we're doing well yeah. given all the disruption. Yes. Okay, yes. so we're going to move to question three. Now, this is a quick fire round. So ideally, okay. you'll give me an answer in a minute because when I get the opportunity to chop these up for TikTok, that's what will happen. Um, so your recommendation for people who are looking to get better at personal brand or people who are looking to get started at personal brand, you've got 60 seconds. The time is not on, but you won't make it onto TikTok if you miss the 60 seconds. Mark, what's your recommendation for those people? Get really clear on who you are. Before you can get out there, you need to know 100% who you are. I have three free personality tests you can go online and take. Those are 16personalities.com, high5test.com, and Google free Enneagram test. You will take these tests in five minutes or less and have complete clarity on who you are and your strengths. And that's 100% step one in the process. Fantastic. I'm finished in about five minutes. You can come and sit with me. Oh, you need to close the door. Oh. You close the door? <laughs> How cute. Bless him. Okay, good. All right. You came in within the minute. Well done. Are you going to come sit here while I finish up with Michelle? Okay. Oh, it's like a month these days, dude. Okay. You sit there. Say hello to Michelle again. Hey there. Hello. hello. Good okay, to see you two... again. <laughs> just two questions. So oh, dude, have you been crying? Don't cry. It's okay. Okay, good. Question number four. What should people read? Or what content should they consume? All right. Well, I'm going to do a shameless plug here, but the LinkedIn branding book is a really good one. Um, hopefully they'll read my second book when it comes out on my process, but um, Google um, personal branding, personal brand strategy. So I also, there's a book by uh, Mark Schaefer called Known, N-O-W-N. It's a really good fundamental personal branding book. And also read Read stuff out of your zone of genius. Read personal development books too, because I think as we brought up in the beginning, we need to have exactly a clear cut, know who we are and how we're going to keep building who we are and developing our strengths. Excellent. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Mark Schaefer is coming to talk to me at the end of May, so I'm really excited. Oh, he's that. great. Yeah. His new book, yeah. um, the, the Communities, that's a really good book. Excellent. The, okay, so what is it? Uh, some about brand, uh, be the, belonging to the brand. That's right. Excellent. That's cool. Okay, good. Right. So now all we need to do is check in with you and see how you're feeling about your experience of having appeared on the most disrupted um, episode of talk marketing <laughs> in the history of talk marketing. How are you feeling? <laughs> I feel lucky that I got such an honor, right? It's been fun. And I got to meet a new friend. He's adorable. So it's been awesome. Excellent. She's talking about you, dude. She says you're adorable. <laughs> okay, good. Right. So the reason I'm checking in, obviously, is because I'm now going to ask you to throw a couple of people under the bus. So the question is, who can you introduce me to in the way that um, Michelle introduced us um, who might enjoy or maybe just endure to have a conversation like this with me? Oh, I've got a good one. She is Brenda Meller of Meller Marketing. And she's Sorry, what a is LinkedIn. Her name? Brenda Meller, M E L L E R. And she Brenda. and Michelle Raymond and I do something called LinkedIn Trifecta Talks. I didn't really put that on my profile, but that's another thing I do. Um, but anyway, she's a good friend of mine. She's a former corporate marketer and she's had her own, she has her own um, marketing. Uh, business that, since like 15 years, all about helping people market themselves on LinkedIn. She's awesome. So you would like her. She's fun. She's from Detroit, Michigan. Have you ever met anyone okay. and talked to anyone from Detroit? She's awesome. I think we might have done in, um, we might have spoke, I have spoken to someone from the Michigan area. Um, mm -hmm. Let's say that. Okay, good. 
And is there somebody else? Because I'm running at about a fifty percent success rate. So if everyone oh, recommends yeah. two um, people, then it continues. Okay. Um, I always get on the spot trying to think who in the. I'm terrible about on the spot thinking. Who do I want to recommend? Um, Stacy Danheiser. She's a, a B2B marketing. Uh, she's a good marketing person. Brings a good perspective about strategy and customers. She's really smart. Stacy Danheiser. She's in Florida, Fantastic. South Florida. Excellent. Yeah. So I think you would like her. Um, Brilliant. That's if it. I think you of someone your else. Obligation. Okay, good. If I think of anyone else, though, I will send them your way in a DM because you can never have enough ideas, right? No, 100%. You can never have enough <laughs> ideas. Um, so what did I want to say? So if you could put together like a little LinkedIn introduction, that's typically enough in the way that Michelle okay. did for us. And that'll yes. be cool. Then I will pick up the ball and I will run from there. Yeah. Michelle, you are an absolute legend. Thank you so much for being here today. I know this has been the most disrupted. It's going to be the most edited version that's ever gone out. Normally, I get top and tail. And <laughs> Sorry. have like three or four cuts. No, I think we it's jinxed, mainly what we happened at this point. We jinxed yes, it, yes. right? <laughs> yes, yes. But I think we you got through. You were so much fun, Mar Martin. You were so much fun. You have such a great show. And I, I just love your questions. I love your friend. It's just fun. I've had a great time. I just want to thank you, especially for waking up at the crack of dawn to talk with me. That means so much. You are very welcome. You are very, very welcome. And you, uh, the thing I've realized from these talks, like there's a few things that have really landed with me. Somebody said to me that when they sit in a presentation, they'll be furiously scribbling away notes and stuff like that. But if you looked at the notes after the presentation, you wouldn't know that that was the presentation that she was at necessarily. Because she says the point is like to let her synapses start firing. It's like, what does this mean for me? And mm -hmm. my synapses are firing. I think, I don't know if I've got the budget to work with you, but I think I need to be developing my personal brand. Like I, I'm really focused thinking about what my value proposition is in the world right mm -hmm. now, and especially mm -hmm. what my key message is. You know, what is it that I really mm -hmm. want to say to the world? And I think I might come to you and ask you to help me with that. But my saying that's have, have been firing. I'm thinking, what is it that I want to say to the world? You know, so mm -hmm. so thank you so much for that. Absolutely. So we'll keep thinking here. of that. It's important. No, absolutely. Well, you keep thinking of that. It's so important. You're doing great work. And I thank you. And go have fun with your new little, you're not your new friend, but your old friend, right? Your you guys new little have friend, to catch my up. Old little friend. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay. Have a beautiful day. And thank you so much. And I will connect you on LinkedIn soon. Okay. You're an All absolute right. legend. Thank you so much, Michelle. Okay. Bye -bye. Thank you. Take care. Bye. Bye. Thank you for taking the time to check out this episode of the Talk Marketing Show. If you found this interesting and useful, then YouTube thinks you're going to enjoy this one. And this is the latest thing that we've posted. If you haven't yet and you could take a second to like, share, subscribe and comment, then that will give us the motivation to continue on this epic, epic journey.